Uh, welcome to the e Shala lecture series on computer science for postgraduate students. Uh, we are in the 17th module uh, of computer graphics. Uh, we have learned in the previous module uh, about 3D viewing, which is an important topic, uh, where we have learned projections, where uh, we have talked about uh, a parallel projection, we have talked about perspective projection, and we have derived some uh, the matrices uh, that correspond to each of these projections. Uh, so, let us uh, quickly uh, go into the next module which talks about uh, which where we will discuss about visible surface detection which is an important aspect of computer graphics. Okay, here in this uh, module we talk about uh, uh, we will be fully uh, thinking about the 3D world. So, we imagine that all the objects are in the 3D world uh, are all placed in the 3D world and then uh, say given a vantage point or assume that we are standing at one position and we are viewing the 3D world. So, we see some of the surfaces and we do not see some of the surfaces, we see some objects, we do not see some objects because of their arrangement in the 3D world and not only due to that one object that is bigger or maybe one object that might obscure the other object. So, there are uh, possibilities that an object is hidden by another object. So, from a given viewing position some objects are visible and some objects are not visible. And to be more specific some surfaces are visible, some surfaces are not visible. So, what we will see in today's uh, module is about visible surface detection and in graphics terminology this is also called as back face removal or hidden surface removal or back face culling and there are many names used uh, in the literature. So, uh, then to remove something that is a back face, what we will do here is we will consider a face that is visible from a given viewing position. So, what do we do? Let me repeat that again. What do we do in this is we select faces that are visible and we ignore faces that are not visible. So, uh, that will be uh, the discussion today. So, let us uh, see what are the various, uh, uh, so these are the various uh, the team members who are involved in this exercise. So, the objectives of this is to understand uh, the need for visible surface detection in computer graphics applications and uh, we will look at uh, the common classes or detection methods of uh, visible surface detection methods. So, some of the common uh, uh, techniques that are used for visible surface detection. And the keywords are image space, object space, visible surface detection, hidden surface removal. So, we can classify these uh, visible surface detection algorithms into either object space or as image space. And uh, we can combine uh, a, the object space and image space and call them as mixed methods. So, we have uh, three classes here one is object space, the other one is image space, and the other thing is combining both, we have a mixed method a mixed set of uh, methods. So, what is object space? So, object space uh, says that we imagine uh, that we are in the 3D world and we identify objects that are visible within the 3D world and uh, which are obscured or which are hidden in the 3D world by other objects and then we identify only those surfaces that are visible and label them as visible. So, we compare each object in the 3D world with respect to other object and determine uh, what is the frontal face or what is the back face and how do we, uh, uh, so how do we remove them. So, that is completely in the object space. Whereas, in the case of image space, uh, what we will do is we will take a projection of the 3D world onto a 2D plane. So, that means, what do we do is we assume that we are viewing from some position and uh, at the position where we are standing or we are viewing, we imagine a 2D rectangular plane and we assume that the 3D world is projected onto the 2D plane and we then uh, uh, try to see uh, what uh, should be the final value at each and every pixel position uh, from the given viewing position. So, uh, we check which face uh, is to actually uh, should be uh, plotted on the 2D uh, map or in a 2D plane. So, we look at the projection of the 3D world onto a 2D plane which uh, is uh, all about the image space methods. So, they, uh, the image space methods rely on this technique. So, mixed methods use a part of comparison in the object space, a part comparison in the image space. 
So, that is how these mixed uh, methods work. So, we will see examples for object space and image space as they are generally most uh, popular, most common uh, methods exist. And uh, uh, let us, uh, you, can, you, can, you can ask me one question like say, why should we remove a surface that is not visible? Why should we remove back faces? So, the fundamental question is, why should we uh, do this at all? Uh, the answer is, uh, why should we include faces or surfaces in the, uh, from the viewing position or whichever are visible from a given viewing position, why should we include those faces or surfaces which are not visible from a given viewing position. When they are not visible, we do not have to apply, uh, we do not have to manipulate the object surface at all, we, we do not need to manipulate that at all. So, we can save lot of resources, a uh, lot of time, lot of computational capabilities and uh, the operations are much quicker. So, the essence is uh, identify faces that are not visible and uh, we do not uh, want them at all in the scene and only take those faces that are visible and do whatever operations you want to do only on those visible faces. So, that is where we save lot of time, effort and operational uh, uh, requirements and uh, resources and so on. So, uh, let us uh, start with, uh, the, let us see the classification of the methods. As we saw the in the previous uh, slide, the visible surface detection methods are classified as either object space or image space or mixed methods. The classification goes like this, uh, a simple back face detection method, uh, the A buffer method, so we call it the accumulation buffer, or the A buffer method, the BSP tree method, the binary space partitioning tree method, the octree method or uh, they are classified under object space methods. Uh, the other uh, um, class of methods are uh, depth buffer method which is a fundamental a famous example for image space method. The depth buffer in, in literature it is also popularly referred to as the Z buffer method. Uh, the scan line method and uh, array casting is a technique used to used in the image space uh, methods for visible surface detection. And finally, the mixed methods they are depth sorting and area subdivision are more complex methods uh, we will uh, not focus on them in this session, but we will focus on the on uh, at least one example for each of the object space and image space methods. Okay. So, uh, fundamentally all these techniques whether they are object space methods, image space methods or mixed methods, uh, they rely on two fundamental principles, uh, they are sorting and coherence. So, sorting is to sort faces uh, from uh, as per their depths uh, from a given viewing position. So, sort faces in the 3D world, faces here is actually face can be a surface or a face. So, a face is a plane uh, which is a part of an object, you can consider say if you imagine a 3D, if you imagine a cube in a 3D world, uh, one of the faces of a of the cube is actually what we mean by saying uh, calling it as face or you can also call it as a surface. Okay. So, sorting is like say how do we sort or how do we arrange these faces as per an order, in some order uh, and coherence is like take advantage of a kind of similarity or regularities within uh, objects or within uh, planes or within surfaces and within uh, parts of a scene. Uh, let us look at the very first uh, uh, method and uh, for visible surface detection which is the simple uh, back face detection which is an example which is a which is categorized under object space methods. Uh, as you can see in the slide there from a given viewing direction if a face is not visible it is considered as back face. So, the important uh, observation is given a viewing direction. So, the uh, you can imagine a position in the 3D world and from that viewing position if something is not visible we call it a back face. Sometimes the name back face culling is used and if you look at the terminology in different books. Uh, you will also find that uh, the word culling, it is called back face culling. Okay. So, as you can see the example there in the slide, a cube is given and imagine your, uh, your, your cube is oriented in such a way that you can see only the three faces of the cube. The remaining three faces or planes of the cube are not visible, so do not include them at all in the uh, picture so that we can avoid lot of uh, processing and lot of manipulation and time and so on. And the very first visible surface detection method is the back face detection 
which is a category of object space methods as you can see there is a in brackets it is given as OS, OS indicates object space method. So, we will take examples for object space method and later we will see examples for image space methods as well. So, the very first thing is the object space method. So, what, what does it say? It is the simplest most method. Imagine you have you are given a 3D a 3 dimensional uh, viewing coordinate system. So, always where we are standing from there you erect 3 mutually perpendicular directions and that forms your uh, viewing coordinate system. Okay. So, imagine your uh, you can you can choose your uh, uh, right handed coordinate system as you can imagine a, uh, the 3 coordinates which are uh, the right handed uh, which are the 3 first 3 fingers of the right hand uh, where the uh, negative z direction is always the viewing direction. So, imagine there are uh, so many objects placed in the 3D world as you can see in the example shown there in the diagram shown there you got there is a pyramid like object and uh, we can uh, uh, assume that a plane or a face or a surface of uh, a 3D object can be if you imagine that to be a plane then we can assume an equation for the plane as Ax plus By plus Cz plus D is equal to 0 can be the equation of the plane. Okay. So, if you imagine a pyramid like thing so there are uh, 4 such and 5 uh, faces for it and uh, uh, we have the equation that defines a plane as Ax plus By plus Cz plus D is equal to 0 and a normal vector to the plane is nothing but uh, the components of the uh, equation you can take the a, b and c the coefficients and they automatically are uh, the normal vector components for the plane. So, a normal vector is very important uh, attribute for a plane, a normal vector identifies the orientation of an object in the 3D world. So, the essence is that uh, when you are viewing direction and when the normal vector direction of a plane are aligned with each other or almost in the same direction then we say that we are actually seeing the back side of it or the back face we call it a back face. That means, you are imagine you are sitting in a classroom okay. uh, what you see is actually what you are uh, what you are seeing is the inside face of a uh, so because assume normal vector is always an external outside and perpendicular to the plane that we uh, consider. So, a normal vector is actually uh, the direction of the normal vector and if your viewing direction are aligned. So, that means, you are inside a classroom and you see actually the back side of the walls. Okay. So, that is how you can imagine. So, uh, imagine that this is uh, this is, uh, the room is closed or the classroom is actually uh, fully closed and imagine it is a closed box like shape it is a cube like or cuboid like and you have the normal vectors which are external and outward. So, the normal vector direction and you, if you are inside you are uh, seeing the back side of it. So, uh, that is how we can classify objects or faces as either front face or a back face. Uh, so, from the discussion given here it is evident that uh, it is given there as uh, if, if the if we are uh, the direction is along the viewing direction is along the normal vector direction to a face we are seeing the back side of it. Uh, a point p x y is an inside point as you know given a plane equation an inside point is something that lies on the plane. Okay. An outside point is uh, away from the plane. Okay. This inside and outside should be understood carefully. Uh, uh, a point p x y is an inside point if it, if it satisfies the condition a x plus b y plus c z plus d uh, less than 0. If it is equal to 0 what we say it is a point it is the equation that defines the plane and it is less than 0 is a point on the plane you can also include uh, p x y and z you can have uh, that z coordinate in the point. Uh, so, when an inside point is along the line of sight to the surface the polygon must be a back face. What is that uh, observe that carefully when an inside point is along the line of sight to the surface the polygon must be a back face. Okay. So, if you can define the uh, normal vector components as a b c because the equation of the plane is Ax plus B plus Cz plus D is equal to 0. So, the normal vector components are obviously ABC and uh, the viewing vector as we know the viewing direction is along the negative z direction if you use the right handed coordinate system. So, uh, along the negative z direction x coordinate is 0, y coordinate is 0 
and z coordinate is actually negative. So, v z if you take the v vector which is the viewing vector direction the components are 0 0 v z where v z is the uh, z component of the uh, viewing vector which is in fact negative. Okay. So, when you uh, take the dot product so the polygon is a back phase if the angle if the dot product between the two vectors is greater than 0. So, when the dot product will be greater than 0 when uh, the uh, when the v z is, is uh, negative uh, we have to uh, also consider uh, the uh, that is because it is negative v dot n is equal to v z into c as you can see because uh, the a into 0 dot product it is simply dot product a into 0 0 b into 0 0 then v z into c is the dot product. So, that is what is left out of the dot of the dot product uh, the uh, this dot product uh, has got v z which is negative in fact. So, if c is negative the dot product becomes positive v z is negative if c is negative the dot product becomes positive. So, v dot n is greater than 0. So, whenever c is less than or equal to 0 we can safely conclude that we are seeing the back side of a phase we can ignore the phase. So, we can call it as back phase. So, that is the uh, important uh, discussion in the, in the very first and the simplest method for back phase, det phase detection. The other uh, back phase detection method that is most popular in the visible surface detection methods is uh, the z buffer or the depth buffer method which is categorized in the which is in the class of image space methods. So, in the previous example we have seen an example for the object space method in this uh, this is an example for image space method. Uh, what is an image space method again as I uh, as I said in the beginning of this discussion we take a projection of the 3D world onto a 2D plane and there we we check for each pixel what is the possible visible surface. So, that we can color that pixel with the uh, color of that uh, surface uh, okay, that we see. So, that is how we do, do, do it for all of the pixels for all the pixels in the 2D uh, plane we take each pixel at a time and uh, uh, we start with the first pixel the corner say the left corner pixel top left corner pixel and uh, we uh, try to uh, sort the surfaces as per their depths and then we will see which uh, surface is the frontmost surface and uh, give the pixel that color the color of that surface. So, that is what we are going to do in the z buffer or the depth buffer. So, depth the z itself is generally understood as depth. Okay. As you can see in the slide there the object depth is measured from the viewing plane along the z axis of the viewing system each surface of the scene is processed separately one point at a time across the surface. So, we take one surface at a time okay. the method can be applied to both planar and non planar polygon surfaces again planar polygons is of interest to us non planar polygons are like one uh, of the vertices of the polygon are not aligned with the other vertices of the polygon or not in the plane of the same uh, as that of the other vertices. So, we can call that as a non planar polygon. So, they are still polygons plane they are, but they are non planar. Okay. Two buffers are used uh, one is the depth buffer and the other one is the refresh buffer. So, depth buffer is used to store depth values for each x y position as surfaces are processed the important statement is the given there for this z buffer algorithm uh, depth buffer stores depth values and refresh buffer stores uh, or st uh, the intensity buffer stores the intensity values at a given x y position. So, as we process a frame. So, the, uh, the z buffer method is clearly given in this picture as you can see the uh, picture there. So, we are viewing uh, from a viewing uh, direction or from a viewing coordinate system along the negative z direction always imagine this keep in mind we are viewing the world along the negative z direction. Okay. Now, what do we do is we have chosen a view plane which is a bigger rectangular plane and we start with we take one pixel position at a time on this rectangular view plane we take every pixel position which is an x y position z is constant. So, that means, we are taking only the x y. So, because if we imagine this view plane to be the x y plane of the viewing coordinate system then the z coordinate is obviously 0. So, the x y coordinates only make sense here for assuming that the view plane is some plane 
that is uh, either z is equal to 0 plane or z is equal to some constant a uh, plane. Uh, as you can see their surface S1, S2, S3 there can be n number of surfaces uh, imagine we are viewing uh, exactly along the perpendicular direction assume you are firing a perpendicular direction from a given pixel position the direction is perpendicular to the view plane. So, imagine a view plane and the direction is perpendicular to the view plane. Uh, so, S1, S2, S3 and Sn can be n number of surfaces and you can order them as per depths ok. The important point is you can order them as per depths ok. So, one uh, surface may be obscuring the other, but initially you first order and later what do we do is whichever surface or face is closest is visible is closest uh, to the view plane is uh, is the uh, the color of that is to be taken for that pixel. So, the algorithm is as simple as initialize the buffers we have got two buffers one is the refresh buffer the other one is the uh, depth buffer. Uh, so, uh, refresh buffer is initialized to the background color and depth buffer is initialized to the uh, is initialized to a value 0. So, for each polygon so take one uh, surface at a time. So, one face or one surface at a time of the of an object ok you can imagine many 3D objects in the 3D world and take one polygonal face at a time and compute the depth value for the polygonal face. Again imagine the, this there can be pol planar polygons or there can be non planar polygons as well. So, take one polygonal face at a time compute the depth value z how do you how do we know at what depth the polygonal face is ok. It is also interesting that at every pixel position on the view plane uh, when you process the same polygon that might be at different depths. So, uh, it is also possible ok. So, uh, z for every x y position may be different ok. If the uh, face is exactly parallel to the view plane ok then uh, the z for the for all the pixels of the face will be exactly the same ok we do not have to really worry. But if the face is oriented like this and if the view plane is like this then uh, you have uh, for every uh, pixel position you have a different depth value. So, as for each polygon do this processing compute depth z for each x y position on the polygon if z greater than uh, depth x comma y that is uh, take each x y position and keep processing the entire thing ok. For every x y position what you do is compute depths ok. If the depth is greater than uh, the previous position so default uh, is 0 default depth is 0 and if it is greater because we are in the negative z direction uh, the negative values that are uh, larger is uh, understood that they are backward. So, they are not in the front they are in the back. So, uh, the uh, smaller the magnitude uh, the closer is the uh, is the uh, object or the face. So, uh, as per depth we can keep comparing for every pixel position on the view plane take a polygonal face take one polygonal face at a time and uh, start with the x y position the first pixel position on the view plane and fire a uh, line into the 3D world and see where it hits the polygonal face compute depth and then keep uh, doing this for all the faces and take the uh, color. So, that is how uh, we uh, do it and finally, what color the pixel has is exactly the color of that face that polygonal face that is closest from that position for that x y position. So, how do we know what is the depth of a polygonal face given a polygonal face with the equation a x plus b y plus c z plus d is equal to 0 how do we compute depth? Depth is uh, the z is the depth for a polygonal face. How do we compute z? z is equal to minus a x minus b y minus d by c and uh, the we can we, we do not have to really uh, do this uh, for every uh, what is called pixel position instead you can use coherence instead you can use what is called uh, similarity that is for the next exposition for the same face. At the next exposition on the view plane for the same polygonal face you can easily compute uh, replace x with x plus 1 comma y you consider a scan line replace x with x plus 1 comma y and uh, wherever there is x if you replace that with x plus 1 x plus 1 what happens is uh, minus a times x plus 1 minus b y minus d by c 
and uh, you can uh, you can expand that inside and minus a x minus a minus b y uh, minus d by c. So, already minus a x minus b y minus d by c is the previous depth z x at x comma y. So, we can conveniently replace that with x comma y. So, we have recursive equations here. The depth at the next x position is given by the previous x position minus a by c, the depth at the previous x position minus a by c. So, we have recursive equations here which are very uh, faster when in, in implementation in a program. So, imagining we have got one scan line. So, we go row by row wise one row at a time. So, we take we uh, fix a y and we keep doing this across the y and then take the next y on the view plane and uh, do the same thing and we keep doing this for all the pixels in the view plane. Okay. So, we can also do this recursively along an edge of a polygonal face uh, by uh, taking y minus 1 and uh, uh, we can easily uh, uh, do this using uh, because as we know the next x x dashed is equal to x minus 1 by m you do not have to really compute you can use again recursive equations. If you do a computation on the previous step you can use the computation the subsequent step using recursion as given there uh, the next x position is x dashed is equal to x minus 1 by m minus uh, uh, that is substitute in place of x x minus 1 by m in the previous equation for uh, z and what we get is minus a x minus 1 by m minus b into y minus 1 minus d by c which is z x comma y plus b by c. As we know m is uh, negative for this uh, uh, for the edge that is like this. So, m is negative. So, the equation is x minus 1 by m. So, that um, this is how we uh, look at the depth buffer method a very important uh, thing in the visible surface detection methods. It requires two buffers the depth buffer and the refresh buffer it deals with only opaque surfaces. So, there are some drawbacks of it obviously. It takes up only one phase at a time for processing it does not take multiple phases at a time. Uh, that is one drawback a major drawback. So, but the advantage as you can see it is simpler it is easy to understand uh, uh, no sorting of surface is required polygons may be processed in any order it is easy to implement. Uh, the next important method uh, which is very popular in the visible surface detection methods is the scan line method. Okay. We have seen uh, the simple back face detection method which is an example of object space methods. Uh, we have seen one example for image space methods which is the z buffer or the depth buffer method. Another interesting example is the image one of the image space methods an example for image space methods is the scan line method. Okay. So, this scan line method uh, it works like it, it, it assumes a scan line across a polygonal face and the advantage over uh, the previous the depth buffer method is that we can process uh, a number of polygonal faces simultaneously. So, we do not have to take each polygonal face. So, there can be uh, too many polygonal faces in a scene. So, uh, we cannot afford to take each and every face at a time and sometimes there can be opaque faces, there can be transparent faces, there can be any type of faces. So, uh, we need to process multiple faces at a time. So, this uh, scan line method is advantageous as we can uh, take care of multiple faces and faces that overlap on each other as well. So, uh, the uh, there is an extension uh, uh, this this uh, algorithm can be used for polygons that are intersecting across a scan line okay process from left to right and depth calculations for each overlapping surface so we can have n number of overlapping surfaces like this and we can process all of them at the same time that's the uh, advantage of this method uh, the intensity of the nearest position is entered into the refresh buffer so let us see how does this work so, as you can see in the picture there uh, we have two surfaces we can call them either a face or surface. So, imagine imagine they are all planar. So, both of them are planar uh, the first surface is, is identified as S 1 the other surface is identified as S 2 and where S 1 and S 2 a part of S 1 is overlapping on S 2 that means, there is a partial overlap between the two faces. Now, S 1 is determined by A B C D and S 2 is determined by E F G is identified by the four vertices E F G H. Okay. Now, the first scan line as you can see uh, it is uh, intersecting 
the edge A B of S 1 and edge E H of S 2 and also edge B C of S 1 and edge uh, F G of uh, S 2. So, it is intersecting 4 edges of these 2 surfaces of these 2 faces. So, but if you look at scan line 2 and 3, uh, the number of intersections are that it does is still 4, but uh, the uh, but the difference between scan line uh, 1 and 2 is that as you can see scan line 2 and 3 is there is no difference here as you can see scan line 2 intersects A D, scan line 2 intersects uh, uh, the E H as the next intersection point is on the E H edge, the next intersection point for the scan line 2 is on the B C edge, and the next intersection point is on the F G edge. So, this uh, the, the intersections are exactly the same for scan line 3 as well. So, 2 and 3 we can uh, use the principle of coherence ok, we can use the principle of coherence. So, whatever we do for 2 can be exactly copied for 3 and we can simply uh, do not have to bother about uh, the rest of the computation. So, we can exactly uh, copy the same set of operations that we did on 2 for 3, but 1 is different from the 2 and 3 because 1 intersects A B a different edge then B C then E H then F G. So, uh, what we do is we note these intersections and then between one edge to the other edge we uh, take the color of the pixel a uh, color of the surface uh, whichever is being intersected say S 1 between A B and B C S 1 is to be selected for scan line 1 between E H and F G for scan line 1 select surface S 2 between uh, the edges B C and E H there is uh, no intersection or there is it is it is like an open space. So, we do not have to bother about it. So, do not take anything there and beyond. So, that is how we uh, try to uh, select each scan line and we prepare an active list here. What is an active list? Active list is the edges uh, across the current scan line. So, whatever edges that the scan line touches. Uh, and they are also sorted in the order of increasing x as the scan line intersects each edge uh, see the uh, x order. So, put them in ascending order that is increasing order. Flag each surface and indicate whether uh, it is on or outside of the surface. So, as I said earlier it is S 1 as long as we are between the 2 um, edges of a scan line uh, of a surface the surface should be on. When we are outside of the surface it should be off the surface should be either on or off, on or off here means we are taking the color of that pixel uh, the surface pixel or we are not taking the color of it that is it, it is on or off means that. So, at the leftmost boundary of the surface the flag is turned on, at the rightmost boundary of the surface the flag is turned off. So, that uh, uh, this is uh, an interesting method here no depth calculations are really necessary and uh, uh, the for the active list 1 for the scan line 1, but for the scan line 2 and 3 we may have to uh, compute also the depths ok. Scan line 1 is to be treated differently from scan lines 2 and 3, for scan line 1 no depth calculations are required, intensity of either S 1 is on or S 2 is on as you can see uh, for uh, the discussion in the uh, given in the slide. For 2 and 3 we need to also look for uh, what is the uh, what is the combined color. So, for scan lines 2 and 3 there is an overlap, so they are going across an overlap region the overlapping region is between E H, the overlapping region is between E H and uh, the B C edges. So, the for the overlapping part or overlapping region for the scan line 2 we need to uh, combine the colors of both uh, surfaces S 1 and S 2 and then we can give a combined color there. So, that is the interesting point. So, if S 1 is prior ok we can if they are opaque, if they are opaque we can take the color of the surface that is overlapping the other. So, the color of the surface that is to the front. Uh, if there if it is a transparent surface what we can do is we can take the combined effect of both and we can take uh, the common color there. So, it is a very efficient algorithm as uh, we can process multiple uh, surface at a time only when overlapping is there we need to calculate depths otherwise we do not have to. Uh, it takes advantage of coherence and uh, the advantages and disadvantages are does not work for surfaces that cut through or cyclically overlap each other, takes advantage of coherence many overlapping surfaces can be processed. So, here we have uh, learnt in this module 
how visible surface detections are classified and we have seen examples for each of them. One is for object space method we have seen and we have seen two examples for image space method. So, uh, you can uh, you will uh, be able to uh, you can explore more on the on our books and other uh, literature. Thank you.